Hello AP Calculus student, Mr. Record here. We are continuing our video series on finding limits graphically. And the thing that we're going to do a little bit differently this time is focus on the finding of a limit using a technology. And we're going to be thankful that that's the case because we're going to be seeing some very unusual uh, expressions that we're going to be finding the limit of and they won't necessarily have graphs attached to them but technology will certainly allow us to um, generate a graph or a table of values if need be and then ultimately find the limit so we're going to look at our first one it is a rational function with a square root in the denominator our x is approaching zero so we're going to want to remember that so in order to do this uh, via a calculator i'm going to use the ti inspire i am using a cast model which i understand some of you might be thinking hey you can find this limit without using a graph and i understand that but the purpose of this video is also to help students who might be finding these limits perhaps without the use of a um, uh, cast type of model. So we're going to go ahead and make a new document and within this document we are going to use a calculator page and I said that incorrect. Let's undo that. We don't want a calculator page. We want a graph page and this particular uh, expression or function that we're going to graph, if you recall, had an x numerator and the denominator was a square root and in order to access the square root Let's do this one more time here. In order to access the square root, we're going to use the math template. I may have failed to mention, I'm sorry, uh, control divide will set up a nice um, fraction for you. So there's our x in the enumerator. And now for our square root, we're going to use the template here. We use this quite often, sandwiched between the 9 and the little catalog symbol. And then we can enter the rest of the function, which was x plus 1. And then in order to get out of that square root, you're going to have to hit the right arrow pad and then you can finish off that denominator. Hit enter. You're going to see this curve. You're also going to want to think about some things here. Um, the simple fact that are all the points that are on this blue curve truly defined on this function? Well, it turns out that there is one that is not defined. If you were to let x be 0, you would notice a 0 numerator and a 0 denominator, which is an un determinate or indeterminate value. And that's evidenced pretty easily if I go into control T and access the table and you see, oh, yep, you're right. If X is zero, F1 of X is undefined. So control T will exit the table, but that doesn't matter. Yes, there is an open circle right here in the graph, but we can still find the limit. As we move to zero from the left side, X's get bigger and bigger and bigger. On the right side, the X, I'm sorry, the Y's get bigger as you, you move to the x value of zero. They get close to two. Over here, we're getting a little smaller with our y values, pretty close to two. Well, I think we can come to the realization that perhaps this limit is indeed going to be two. And that indeed is the answer to this particular problem. You can go ahead and write that up. That's really all there is to it. All right, taking a look at the next function, it's a little interesting piecewise function with the uh, definition here being the not equal and equal to symbol. X is going to approach two, so let's look at this here and then remember it as I enter. I'm going to make a new page, control doc adds a page, make a graph page once again. To access a piecewise template, you're going to go ahead and hit the template button. You want to be really careful. This is the options for piecewise functions. It really doesn't matter which one you choose because you can always add more uh, lines to it. These two are systems of equations. All right, so we're going to choose uh, the double piecewise function. If you recall, the uh, first argument was 1. Whenever x was not equal to 2, to get a not equals, control equal will bring up all of these inequalities. And we can choose that guy. And then we will cursor down to this field where we can enter 0 when x is equal to 2. We hit enter. There's our graph. Very interesting, looks like a horizontal line, but truly, is it a horizontal line? Well, it is mostly a horizontal line, but if you notice, it says down here that the y value should be 0 when x is 2. So there should be an ordered pair right about above that pointer's position. And moreover, there probably should be an open circle right above that finger position, because our y values are only allowed to be 1 when x is not 2. 
but does that have an impact on the limit? No, because the y values are 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 as we approach 2 from the left, and they're 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 as we approach 2 from the right. So the answer to this limit would just simply be 2. Okay, it's very easy uh, to, um, let me uh, rephrase that. <laughs> Our answer to this limit would be 1. I apologize. The y values are 1 all the time. Hopefully that didn't confuse you, but that is completely wrong. 1 is our answer. What I was going to say is you don't want to be confused by thinking that this is going to reveal the answer to the limit. I won't argue the fact that f of 2 is 0, but that doesn't mean that necessarily that the limit of f as x approaches 2 is 0. As we see in this case, it was 1. Moving on to number 15. 15 has a very interesting function. For those of you that are in my class, you may have uh, remembered sketching this on your summer packet. So we're going to go ahead and throw the square root of x over x. This is an interesting thing that you see from time to time in calculus. So we'll go with the fraction shortcut, control divide. To get an absolute value, once again, math template here, and it's the first option in row two. So there's our graph of the square root of, uh, sorry, the absolute value of x over x. Notice it does have a discontinuity, pretty obvious. But what's really going on at these two endpoints, I wonder? Can x truly be 0? Well, just by inspection, you would see, oh, I would get 0 divided by 0. That's indeterminate. So really, you've got open circles at the ends of these two segments. But does that have an impact on the graph? Well, if we let x approach zero from the left, we have y values of negative one all the time. If x approaches zero from the right, y values of positive one all the time. Hey, these those two numbers don't match. Our fingers don't come close together. And what do we say about that? Well, that's an example of a limit that does not exist. All right. Moving on to our final example, perhaps the most interesting one. The limit of sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0. So we're going to go ahead and make yet another final graph page. To access the trig words, you would use or type the trig button next to 7. Option 1 is sine, and then bring in a fraction, 1 over x. So this guy is going to be sketched in magenta. Notice how in a document, each function you graph just changes color. As x approaches 0, what do we have? Well, we go down with our y values and then back up and then down and then it's kind of hard to see. If x approaches 0 from the right side, we move upwards and then downwards and then upwards. Hmm, what is this limit? Maybe maybe everything is kind of converging upon 0? Maybe that's the answer. Well, I wouldn't necessarily assume that. What I think we need to do is get a little bit more detail with this graph, so we need to zoom in. In order to zoom, you would go into the menu button and choose option 4, Windows Zoom. There's two different ways to zoom in. Zooming box and zooming in both work fine. In this particular instance, I'm going to select zoom in. And you'll have a little magnifying glass, which you want to place right about where the origin is. And you can hit your enter or your click pad button. And notice it does indeed zoom in just a little bit. I can do this again. First, I apologize. I left the zoom feature. You typically, you won't leave the zoom feature. I did something silly and clicked on the curve, but you could click enter or, or the <clears throat> click pad button as many times as you want, and it'll just continue to zoom in as many times as you click it. Notice as long as that icon in the upper left hand corner shows the magnifying glass with the plus, you're zooming in. If you want to intentionally leave zoom in mode, you would just hit escape. This is about as much zooming in as I think we need to do because what I wanted to kind of convince to you is that as the x value approaches zero, we just oscillate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth a lot. How much is a lot? Well, you might be surprised to know that you, inf you uh, oscillate an infinite number of times. It's hard to believe that you can actually go up and down and oscillate forever and ever as you move closer to the origin, but that's what's happening. This, this particular function will never, ever reach that destination. So what do you would say about the answer to this limit? Well, simply put, it doesn't have one. It does not exist. This is always one of the more interesting ones. And if you're not convinced by that, I would just kind of 
suggest that you do a little bit more zooming in and investigating. You could even use a, a trace feature at, or call up your table and you'll kind of see what's happening with that particular graph. Anyway, I hope this helps. This closes out all of our video series on finding limits graphically. We're going to turn towards the, L, the uh, delta epsilon definition of, of limits and do some limits uh, analytically using algebra in our next particular section. So uh, anyway, I'm glad that uh, you stopped by and we'll see you next time.